everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Zurich with Multicultural Arts Exchange. And I'm here with three very lovely young ladies who are the stars of our upcoming show, Barry Monologue and Dance. You, many of you probably already seen the first one, but if you weren't there, you out of luck. You actually not out of luck because you do you have a chance to see it again on uh, March 17 at uh, 4 o'clock. So we'll start this introduction. So please, please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Asia Zlatina. Um, I'm Harley Troutman. And I'm Sarah Warren. OK, so uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about who are you in relation to the show? I am the uh, show's, I guess, founder. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Um, and I've been dancing with the show for um, two, two years. Is that? <laughs> and this will be my first time dancing with this show. So okay. I'm excited for this. So they have uh, several di different perspectives on uh, the, the show. Uh, okay, yes. so let's start uh, this definitely as a founder. So I think, can you tell uh, our viewers a little more about yourself? Uh, your story and how you came to the idea of uh, creating the show. Yes, definitely. So I originally am from the former Soviet Union and my mother was born in the Soviet Union and my grandparents are from shtetls of Eastern Europe that moved to Grozny, Chechnya. And um, I guess the history of our family contributed heavily to the show. We immigrated in 1992, and uh, I lived with my grandparents for until they passed. Um, so I started thinking about a way to bring their lives to other people, bring their experiences to other people. And that was very important for me to keep them alive since I miss them very much and there was no way to reach them. So I started to create about them and their experiences. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. You, you mentioned you couldn't reach them. Uh, did, did, did you have any, let's say, episodes while you were producing the show when you felt that you actually reached back for them? I felt it in my heart, but I didn't. Um, I've had other experiences in my life where I really felt that they were with me. Um, but since the beginning of this show, I can only hope that they're with me. Uh, they often come to me in my dreams, but that's something that happened before as well. Okay. So, uh, they, they moved by, by you now, and how you came to this show? Sure. Um, uh, so, I... Um, I'm not originally from the Philadelphia area, and I moved here about three years ago. And um, in that journey, uh, crossed paths with Asia um, just via the dance community. Um, and so we did a few projects together, and this show has taken on several versions and several lives. And so I had the pleasure of being a part of it. Um, I would say about two years ago, and have just had the opportunity to take on different roles um, and really get to experience the show from many different angles and different casts and different locations, um, which has been an interesting learning process and exciting. It makes it makes for a, for a different experience each time you do it. Okay, can you elaborate a little bit on these different experiences, different angles? What, what, what were like the most maybe interesting twists and turns in a development? Because show is a live production, mm -hmm. you know, it's a live body of work it involves, but uh, and since you uh, were looking and being inside of it uh, from the very beginning, can, can, can you tell me maybe a maybe couple of interesting stories about how it changed? Sure. Um, well, I guess to start, I've uh, so the show is uh, relatively um, set in terms of roles and casts and 
when I first entered the scene, I was filling in for someone that couldn't be in the show that, at that time. And then that person returned and somebody else. So I had a little bit of a journey of figuring out kind of what the different roles are and where I fit. Um, and then I guess something that's been exciting is the, the different places that have hosted us um, in terms of being in Philly, but then we've had experiences in New York and DC and New Jersey and Romania and mm. each place that we've gone, the setting or the audience has been um, pretty, pretty varied. Um, and so we've had opportunity to connect with people that really understood what we were offering and we've had the opportunity to connect with people that um, may have never seen dance before. And so I think navigating those social settings um, along with just the different spaces has been um, really interesting. I guess I'm trying to think of a good example. Okay, you <laughs> just say, think about it and I know it will come. Sure. But uh, they do move to Sarah now and Sarah, you are new to the show. Yes. It's going to be your first time. So how, how did you find out about this? And why did you decide? <laughs> okay, uh, it sounds, you know, your reaction kind of bring, uh, make me think that it was a really interesting, funny story. So go, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's a funny story, but <laughs> I met, I mean, I've known Asya and like we've seen each other perform at other venues before previously, but I guess recently in the last, when was it? Probably back in like September, we were subbing a class at Koresh and I came and took her class and we got to speaking afterwards and I just told her if she's ever looking for other dancers, like I'd really be interested in working with her. I think she's a beautiful mover and she has a brilliant mind, so I really wanted to work with her. And then we performed together in the Come Together Festival. Was that in November? Yes. So that was my first time performing with Asya. We did a duet, um, a fun little duet there. And then, <laughs> I guess okay, it's things kept progressing better, it's and she asked me to see once <laughs> how fun was this to it. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm laughing because everything Sarah has been in, I was pulling her in. I hoped she was available. <laughs> She's a beautiful mover and I've seen her dance like she mentioned. But mm -hmm. I was laughing because when you said, how did you find out about this? Well, I kind of came to her and I said, look, there's this thing I need you to do. <laughs> Are you, would you like to do it? And in both times, the duet that she described, it was our duet, mm -hmm. my, mine and Harley's. And uh -huh. Harley had a different commitment with a different show that day. Mm -hmm. So Sarah kind of filled in for her. So there's a lot of filling in, which turns into something on its own and very beautiful in the end. Even though it's filling a space, it takes a path of its own. Okay, so uh, again, it's just... Sounds to me uh, like a very natural artistic uh, thing, because we have uh, in multicultural arts exchange we have the same kind of process. If you remember how you came aboard, <laughs> I, I know girls don't know, but I attended um, one of our shows in uh, June of last year, and she came in, and it was on a, almost on the day of her engagement. <laughs> and uh, it was actually her birthday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was her birthday. And uh, because we had a soprano uh, performing, I asked her specifically to sing Happy Birthday to Asa. She, she was so moved that she, after that, she came to me and told me, you know, would you be interested to hold this, this show? So this is a history. <laughs> and I hope history will continue. But what draws you, what drew you in? Uh, as you know, as an idea of the show, not just a, you know ability, a possibility to perform. Um, so I joined the process. I was in the second version of the show, um, or the second casting. So the actual development of the material was not the process that I was a part of from the beginning. Um, so I kind of entered it with a little bit of a, a preset movement and the music. And so for, for me, I was kind of entering a place where the um, not really having as much of the backstory and really 
more or less connecting with the emotional aspect of what was happening and the you know even though there may be a set storyline that kind of inspired the movement and the pieces themselves as a performer I think that there's sort of a universal emotional language that's being spoken and that it was kind of easy to fall into that and relate it to my own life experience a little bit. Um, and I did end, end up learning more about the inspiration for the show, but I was kind of able to find my way through it on my own prior to knowing too much information, which mm -hmm. was um, interesting. And then it, I think that it allowed me to connect deeper with it because I had my own idea of what, um, what the material meant to me and then was able to draw back and connect it to what it meant to everybody else. And what was this material? What was this material? What made you connect to this show? What personal experience? Um, I guess that my question's a little complex. Um, <laughs> the, I mean, the, there's a very broad range of, um, in watching the show, you'll see moments of joy, moments of sadness and sorrow and loss. And uh, there's a, a lot of it's very human. It's uh, it connecting with other people. And so I think that um, some, of, some of it is celebratory. Um, some of it is very sad. And I think that in, I mean, I, without getting like too personal, I no, think that we all take that, the, the journey of the ups and downs. And I think that mm -hmm. it's um, interesting that this show kind of shows so much of, uh, it's very three dimensional in terms of the emotional experience. And I think that that's, uh, as a performer, something that I'm able to tap into, even just from my day to day. You mm -hmm. know, I wake up and I experience a broad range of, you know, um, emotional journey. And I think that I could tap into some of the like more intense things that have happened in my life, but also just like what, what my Sunday looks like could very easily <laughs> be reflected in, you know. What okay, so, so basically again, uh, one, uh, every time you perform a show, you, you might uh, kind of, a bit because you're kind of uh, experiencing your life, in between these performances, you can uh, express one emotion or another, a little bit more on a personal level. Okay, so how about you? So for me, just joining, um, along with learning the movement and everything, I feel like that's like, Asya has almost, I feel like, gotten a chance to reflect back on, back on why she created the work. Um, in teaching me now, a new person coming into the process, uh, maybe originally too, she was like, okay, I need to fill this role, this dance role. But now she's having to explain her work to me and just catch me up with everyone else who's done the work before. So I love hearing her reasoning for creating the work. I love hearing her experience, her family's stories. Uh, it's just nice to hear that and be able to take that in while learning the movement at the same time too. So I can relate to it mm -hmm. or try to relate as best as I can without having actually experienced that myself. Okay, yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, my next question would be actually, uh, how can you actually recollect, recollect remember uh, several, at least maybe one or two stories that really touched you during the performances, the reaction from the public? Yeah, there's been, uh, because we go to many different places and different audiences, as Harley said, we also have a range of ages and experiences. There's definitely been standout uh, reactions to the performance that I, for myself, the one of the main reasons that I wanted to create the show exactly like we just spoke about was that it has a universal appeal because a lot of people go through painful things but they come out on top stronger and they can still celebrate life they don't have to give into their pain that's one of the main messages of the show it's one of the main messages of the show because this is how my grandmother taught me 
that even with all the pain in your life, you still smile and are grateful for the gifts you have. And then she taught that to my mom, my mom taught it to me. And one of the points I wanted to get across with this show was that perhaps the same way I am a link in the chain of my family, other people who remember these songs and dances from their childhood, there's also elements of traditional dance in there, that they should remember their parents and grandparents. So they, they also make them immortal. And it's very hard when someone's gone from this earth to reconcile that. It's, loss is very difficult. So I think one of the best things I've ever heard from an audience member was the impact that it had on them. And they approach us saying, thank you so much. I remembered my parents. I remembered my grandparents that used to sing these songs. And the second best compliment for myself that I have ever heard uh, as a reaction to the show was how Harley mentioned the range of emotion. There was a woman in Romania. She's not the first one but she's just the most recent one I remember saying, when I saw this show, I laughed, and then I cried, and then I laughed. So she really picked up on that broad range of emotions we experience in life. Uh, how people of different nationalities that don't have this recollect, how they were. Um, on the note of the different nationalities, there have been several instances where we've been in a community that primarily didn't speak English, um, which is, you know, my first language. <laughs> um, and I think that there was something really interesting that happened when we were in Romania, where we had a little bit of a conversation with the audience after the performance, and there was a, a group, the first two or three rows of people that were there were students that had been bust across town to come see the show um, who didn't speak English and or didn't feel comfortable speaking English to a mostly native English speaking group and they sent one kid on behalf of the entire group to come up and tell us how beautiful it was and his experience and part of the communication was also that they had never been exposed to dance before. Um, and so it was really um, interesting to have the pers like the young perspective and the one person that felt strongly enough that he would come up and speak on behalf of all of his potential classmates and friends, <laughs> um, you know, preteen teenagers that really felt a connection and moved by what they saw. Um, which again kind of plays into the the diversity of the audience and is was an interesting dynamic to have with a group where maybe they were somewhat familiar with these songs but they weren't the songs of their childhood these you know it was a, a younger group and still to be able to find a connection with those um, those audience members I think was kind of a key moment in realizing how how what we were doing really could reach a broad, a broader field than okay. just the people that. Okay, beautiful.